Okay, and it is uh, time now. So uh, the next uh, talk is by Jersey Kakol on metrizable subspaces and quotients of non-Archimedean spaces. Uh, please start. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for uh, for for uh, uh, special uh, uh, organizers for inviting me to give a talk. I do hope next time we'll have occasion to meet face to face. It's not like today. Uh, 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 okay, let's go to some detail about my talk. Uh, on metrizable subspaces and quotients of not Archimedean spaces, CPXK. Apparently, <clears throat> my talk is, is highly motivated by a very old, still open question posed by Mazur, I guess in 1926. It's announced in Scottish book. And uh, Mazur asked if every infinite dimensional Banach space, real or complex, can be mapped by continuous linear uh, map onto infinite dimensional separable Banach space separable Banach space. This is equivalent to say, does every infinite dimensional Banach space, once again, a real or complex, has infinite dimensional separable quotient, separable quotient. So what I said, this uh, famous question, this famous problem is still open in general, but some special cases have been already solved uh, uh, for real or complex case, for example, Rosenthal proved that uh, if we deal with Banach spaces of continuous functions, real or complex, over compact X, then this Banach space CX always has infinite dimensional uh, separable Banach, separable quotient, uh, this is either little c0, little c0, Banach space little c0, or little l2. So th th this implies that, uh, that any infinite dimensional c Banach space cx can be mapped by continuous linear map either on a little c0 or a little l2. Uh, you see, the information about op openness of this map is hidden because of this uh, well-known uh, open mapping theorem between Banach spaces. But for, for a while, look at this title of this, of this talk. It says that we are just trying to recognize when CPXK has infinite dimensional metrizable quotient. If the space has infinite dimensional metrizable quotient and, we, and we, we, we assume that K is separable, then the uh, necessary, this quotient must be separable also. This comes from typical properties of space with continuous functions pointwise topology. So suppose we have such a quotient, infinite dimensional metrizable, separable when K is separable, then we have a continuous linear uh, uh, subjection on this uh, uh, on this object which is metrizable and separable and this map is continuous linear and open so open this word here open should be kept up uh, because we don't have open mapping theorem for spaces uh, which are not necessary banach spaces one should one should think about uh, uh, this uh, good open mapping theorem between non Banach spaces. So, therefore, the question which appears here uh, has some uh, uh, connection with uh, this old uh, open uh, problem and also with uh, some, uh, 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 some problem posed by, uh, uh, by Yefimov a long time ago. There will be some connection with pure topological problem and, and pure function analy analytic problem. 
Uh, okay, so let's go to uh, to some uh, to some uh, detail. So I need to recall some uh, obvious definitions. Uh, K always in my talk is non-trivial valued, non-Archimedean complete field. And uh, as usual for non-Archimedean field, we have uh, uh, valuation with a strong uh, inequality like, like is mentioned here, is written here. And uh, some consequence typical for non-Archimedean valuation is property like, like is mentioned here. So suppose we have a linear space over our case, our K. And just to recall the semi-norm on our space is a function like here with two properties. You can see as usual, instead of triangle inequality, we have a strong triangle inequality. And our object, because we are dealing with spaces of continuous functions, so our object X is always infinite ultra regular space. So this is infinite Hausdorff topological space uh, for which we have clopen subsets of X of both closed and open form a basis for topology of our space X. So now, if we know already, if we have in mind that our field K is non-Archimedean, the typical definition of the pointwise topology on our space of continuous function from X to K is non-Archimedean. This pointwise topology is defined as a non-Archimedean. It has, it has a non-Archimedean basis of, 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 of uh, open non-Archimedean non sets. Huh? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, and we consider space with pointwise topology. Uh, it's very easy uh, to check like in a classical uh, case that uh, this space, CPX case, is isomorphic to a dense subspace of the product, k to power x. So this topology here is inherited from our product topology, pro product space, k to power x. Um, so therefore, we have a very simple, a trivial uh, characterization when exactly the space CP xk is metrizable. This happens only if, a is, if x is countable. So only for countable spaces x, this object is, is metrized. So now let's go to our main problem. So we are just trying to concentrate on the following three questions. Uh, suppose uh, uh, in principle, our space x is an infinite uh, ultra regular space. So it's, Quite natural to ask, I explain you where, uh, later why, why this, uh, uh, we are trying to, to attack the question, these three questions uh, posed below. So the question, the first question is the following. Uh, is it possible that our space, or even when this space uh, CPXK contains infinite dimensional, metrizable subspace would be great to know that this infinite dimensional metrizable subspace is closed. It's not always, but can be. So much more demanding question is the following. Uh, when or does CPXK contains, contain infinite dimensional complemented metrizable subspace? I explain you below what does it mean complemented uh, subspace. And the, the next question, uh, does CPXK uh, admit infinite dimensional metrizable quotient. Metrizable quotient. Okay, so what does it mean for a locally convex space E in general to have a comp complemented copy of a locally convex space F? It means that there is a closed vector subspace G in E such that this object G is isomorphic to F and a closed vector subspace L of E such that both the direct sum of G and L 
is our original space. So in that case, we say that that uh, that uh, uh, E uh, contains a complemented copy of a locally convex space F. Uh, if this holds uh, like we have here. Okay, so uh, now let's define the following object, which appears. Uh, which will be uh, will, will be checked uh, for next our uh, slides. So this little C zero n is a space of all sequences in K with that uh, which convert to zero, and this space is endowed with the topology of pointwise convergence. So this space this space is it contains is contained in the product countable product of K. So surely this space is metrizable. Uh, if K is separable, then space is of course separable, but it's never complete. It's never complete. So it is a metrizable, very nice, well-defined subspace of K to power M. And the first theorem is the following. If you just consider any infinite re ultra regular space, it turns out that this space CPXK contains isomorphic copy of little c0. But if we know additionally that our ultra regular space contains an infinite compact subset, then we know something more, that this space contains a closed copy of little c0 and k. This uh, uh, assumption is essential. So at least we know at this moment that if we deal with our space, always we have such a copy of this space. Additionally, if our space is, for example, infinite compact ultra regular, yeah? then this space contains a close copy of this space, a copy of the space, which is in fact a closed subset, closed subspace of CPXK. So uh, uh, this is what I already said, but if we have a very concrete, very peculiar situation, X is discrete, then it's very easy to show that our space with pointwise topology is just the product. K to X. And because this space is so-called minimal space, doesn't, doesn't admit any weaker Hauder topology, vector topology or Hauder, top, Hauder vector topology. So uh, any close up space of this guy is always isomorphic also to, 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 to product K to, to A for some A which is included in X. So therefore, any infinite dimensional closed metrizal subspace of this guy, always we have this assumption that X is discrete, is isomorphic to K to power M, countable product of M. Any infinite dimensional closed metrizable subspace of this space is isomorphic to, the, to this product. So because our space, this space is never metrizable, so for such case, this CPXK does, uh, 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 doesn't contain closed subspaces isomorphic to this space. So it shows that this assumption here about existence of infinite compact subsets is really essential. So at least this situation is very simple. Yeah, so at least the first step is done. I mean, the first question is, is, is over. Uh, the solution is very simple. And back to get approach to another question, which was listed above, we need a few information about, uh, about uh, the dual of our space CPXK. So if X is a regular space, for any, for any little X, X, we define delta X as a Dirac mesh. So this is a, this is a, a function which is defined like here, the X, the X over F is simple FX, uh, when f is running uh, our space, uh, uh, when f runs over the space CPXK. 
So now the linear span or the linear how of um, such set here, when x is taken from x arbitrary, this is a, this is a, of course, the, this linear span is located here and the, the product k to product to, to cxk is identified, in fact, is well known as a dual, topological dual of cpxk. Uh, so the dual is very simple. The dual is very simple. You can, you can look at this uh, situation here. If you take any continuous linear function over this space, uh, uniquely, uh, the is uniquely written as a linear combination of Dirac measures. Uh, when f is finite subset of x, and we have some non-zero scalar, scalars, uh, alpha subscript x. x are taken from this capital F. So any continuous linear functional over this space CP, CPX has the following form. It's a very simple, very simple uh, uh, description of, of the dual. Okay, now uh, this finite set is called the support of this, uh, of this continuous linear functional. And this uh, real number, which appears here, the maximum, of such absolute value when R X is taken from the finite set F, we denote by the norm. In fact, we call this this number as a norm of this uh, of this uh, uh, of this uh, continuous linear function. Uh, so this is a few words about this preparation. And will we 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 next next our concept next our definition is going to be really deeply motivated by famous and uh, well very well recognized well recognized function analysis a result of Josephson Nissen Zweig it's uh, called the Josephson Nissen Zweig theorem uh, so it, 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 it for for any infinite dimensional Banach space f of a real or complex Always, you can find the sequence in the dual, topological dual of f, such that this sequence converges to zero point twice. So, for any f, this n of f goes to zero. But the norms of continuous functionals uh, can be taken equal one for any f. So, this is a famous Josephson Nissen's like. Theorem, yeah, uh, and motivated, being motivated by this theorem, trying to apply this stuff to our case related with spaces, continuous functions, pointwise topology, we decided to provide the following definition. Suppose we have infinite, infinite ultra regular space X. So we'll say that our space CPXK has the Josephson Nissen like property, later will be just abbreviated to a three letter J and P. If we can find a sequence where in the dual, in the dual of our CPX, so we know how this dual looks like, such that all norms defined, defined before are one, and the sequence in the end goes to zero pointwise. Uh, so this is our approach to the next, next result. So we call our space CPX to have a Josephson nissen like property if the following property holds here. You can see it's highly motivated by Josephson nissen like uh, theorem. And this theorem, which appears here, provides a full characterization uh, of a uh, of the property uh, for CPX to contains little c0 and k complement. So I should add one more example, one more condition here. I forgot, but I tell you what, what does it mean. OK, j and p is equivalent to say that CPXK uh, uh, contains a complemented subspace isomorphic to little c0 and k, has a quotient isomorphic to little c0 and k, and CPXK admits a continuous linear map on this space. 
if we add here extra condition, our space is pseudo compact. So for example, might be compact. If we have infinite ultra regular compacts X, the next condition says the following. CPX contains a complemented metrizable subspace infinite dimensional if and only if any condition from one to four holds. So we, we so suppose we know that our space CPX contains a complemented metrizable infinite dimensional subspace. It, this implies necessary that also we know that our CPX contains complemented little cd rand gate. This is full characterization for uh, uh, in terms of such a property uh, uh, connected with Joseph Somnissens like uh, a theorem uh, 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 that uh, uh, CPXK uh, contains a complemented metrizable uh, infinite dimensional subspace. This is the second part of our list of problems I announced uh, from the beginning. Uh, so now let's look at this situation. Suppose we have a compact space, ultra regular compact space. So this is a Banach space with a subnorm topology. And this is something which is totally different from a real case, because in the real case, it's not necessary that the Banach space of continuous function, real or complex, always contains a Banach space. This is little c0 and k is endowed with subnorm topology. This is a Banach space. It's not, it's not pointwise topology like we have here. Yeah? It's a Banach space. Always this Banach space contains complemented little c0, uh, Banach little c0 space. In a real or complex case, this is not true in general. Such property containing or not containing Banach space little c0 is uh, 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 distinguishing uh, Banach spaces which are Grothendieck spaces or not Grothendieck. I mean uh, Banach spaces of continuous functions. Uh, so in that case, if we deal with non-Archimedean case, so always if we have in mind this result here, always we can find a sequence uh, converting to zero in the weak star topology with norm, all, of, all of them have, a, a, have norm one. This is, I'm repeating, this is impossible for a real or complex cases to have always. Okay, so, uh, uh, once again, consider this Banach space, yes? So on the, we know that this Banach space contains always this Banach uh, uh, space little c0, but uh, on this Banach space, we have a weaker, weaker topology, pointwise topology, and this pointwise, this space with pointwise topology contains, of course, a little c0 and k as a close-up space, but, but might be, that this space contains complemented little c0 and k. It depends. We have the JNP property or not. It depends. This 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 is related with our previous theorem. Uh, so a very trivial situation when the CPX K contains complemented subspace isomorphic to little c0 and k is when x contains an, a non-trivial convergent sequence. It's for example, when x is metrizable space, yeah, infinite metrizable space, always we can find such a sequence. So for such spaces, we have a complemented little c0 and k. Yeah? But the question now is the following. Is it possible? that always CPXK contains a complemented copy of this little C0 and K with the pointwise, pointwise topology inherited from, from the product K to N. For, is it possible that for each or for, in, for any infinite regular compact space we have such a situation which, 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 uh, which is indicated in blue? So the answer is no. The answer is no. So, I'm going to, pro to provide a couple of, uh, of uh, uh, examples. But in general, in general, this color says the following. There exists a compact ultra regular space X. 
such that for every sequence which goes to zero pointwise uh, sequence of continuous linear functions, we have that the norms also goes to zero. So, so uh, if you have in mind, if you look at this theorem from, from, from the previous, uh, the previous uh, slide, so it, it means that we can, uh, we can handle with such spaces CPXK for which uh, a little C0 and K is not complemented is not complemented. So let's try to explain the situation more, more concrete, uh, with more concrete examples. But first I need to recall the following concept. A topological space is called extremely disconnected if it's regular and the closure of any open set is open. So how to get such examples? It's a very, very, very well-known fact that if you deal with discrete spaces X and you take the stone check compactification of this guy, which is, this, uh, which is discrete, then beta X, this, this stone check compactification beta X is, is extremely disconnected. But in principle, if you have this extremely disconnected compact space X, the theorem, uh, the main principle theorem says the following, does not exist a continuous linear subjection from our space onto little c0 and k, does not exist continu continuous linear subjection. So in particular case, this space doesn't have a quotient isomorphic to little c0. And by the way, doesn't have complemented subspaces isomorphic to this space. Because if we have in this space isomorphic copy of this guy, then the projection from the whole space onto C0 and K is of continuous open onto. So for extremely disconnected compact spaces X, it's impossible to get such a I complemented copy of little c0 and k in our space. But this, and so for example, Colorado 7 says something very practical. So if we deal with a discrete space and you consider this beta d, so this stone check compactification, this guy is extremely disconnected space, that one. So we don't have a, a isomorphic copy of little c0 and k, so this space doesn't have a quotient isomorphic to little c0 and k. Uh, so what can we say more? Uh, I'm going, so of course, this is some limitation. The previous Colorare, the last Colorare says something which is, uh, which is um, some uh, limitation of, of our results. But it doesn't mean that it's still impossible to get some uh, uh, infinite dimensional, uh, infinite dimensional metrizable quotient, even for the case when our original, spa original space TP uh, X K doesn't have a, a complemented subspaces of little C0. So uh, to, to provide next theorem, I need some concept here. A sequence Xn is said to be relatively compact if the set of elements is relatively compact in our field. So by a, a little l subscript C, we mean the space of all relatively compact sequences in K, of course, with, with the uh, uh, topology uh, inherited from the uh, countable product of K. And a little l infinity and K is the space of all bounded sequences, of course, with a pointwise topology. Uh, so these inclusions are clear. Little C0 is located in little L, C is located in little L infinity. Uh, so we know already from color seven that this space, 
Cp beta dk doesn't have a quotient isomorphic to little c0 and k because it doesn't have a, 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 a doesn't have a complemented subspace of little c0 and k, but we can get something. We can describe concrete infinite dimensional metrize equations for these spaces when d is infinite discrete space. Huh? Um, so theorem is the following. Take infinite discrete space and consider the space E. This is our, as usual, space with this object beta D and the conclusion or the claim of the theorem is the following. This space has infinite dimensional metrizable quotient. How to describe this quotient? So it's just some kind of recipe. What to do to get this quotient? Take any sequence of non-empty finite pairwise disjoint sets located in D, and the absolute values of, 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 of elements of the sequence go to infinity. And consider such a closed subspace of our space E. It's just the set of OF functions from E for which this sum is zero when X are taken from Fn for any M. So this is in fact intersection, uh, it's cloud subspace. So now let's consider uh, this Hausdorff quotient. So this is closed subspace, so this space is Hausdorff. And this space, it turns out that this space, I mean this quotient isomorphic to this object. Of course, this is a topology inherited from this metrizable space. So this object is metrizable. If k is separable, this object is separable. Of course, it's this infinite dimensional space. And what is this g? Is the partition of m, which is defined as we taken in such a way like I described here. This absolute value of any single step is exactly absolute value of, of uh, 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 fm. In particular, k, okay, in particular case, when this our space has a quotient isomorphic to this space, when we deal with a special this partition of our space m. Yeah? So it's, this is a space like this. So once again, despite the fact this space, this space, I mean, this space Cp beta, a, beta dk doesn't have a quotient isomorphic to this space. We can get another very interesting quotient. Maybe, maybe uh, 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 this little l zero is not necessary. Complemented here, in fact, we still we don't know. Uh, is it possible to have a complemented? Probably, probably not, because um, it looks a little bit strange to have a complemented little c zero, little l infinity in this space. But anyway, quotient uh, appears here, infinite dimensional quotient isomorphic to the space. And uh, if we deal with locally compact spaces K, then these three spaces are exactly the same, are isomorphic. This little c0, little l, 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 l0c, l infinity, lc, they are isomorphic. So, uh, so therefore, we have some conclusion. If K is locally compact, so this is the situation which is just mentioned here, our space, when X is extremely disconnected, so for example, when X is just beta D, when D is discrete, then CPXK has infinite dimensional metrizable quotient isomorphic to little l infinity. So this is the first. The consequence I just mentioned already, if D is infinite discrete, a K is locally compact, then this space is a quotient isomorphic to this space of bounded sequences. Yeah? So uh, uh, Q, uh, this Q, QP, this, the, the field QP is of course locally compact. So we have a very concrete situation where, when we deal with such a field QP, this space is, has a quotient isomorphic to L infinity, but we know this space doesn't have a complemented subspace little and little c0 and k. 
Uh, but uh, this is some uh, some uh, rescue operation. We got also something very interesting, quotient uh, with a little infant. Okay, so uh, when K is not necessary, locally compact, we can say something uh, like this. If D is infinite discrete space, then this space has, has a quotient isomorphic to little LC. And in particular case, having in mind that C, CQ is not locally compact, we know that uh, this space has a quotient isomorphic to little LC. It's still unknown if we can replace LC by L infinity. So we know that CQ is not locally compact. So this equality, which was mentioned uh, one slide before, it doesn't work, uh, doesn't, doesn't work uh, for, for non-locally compact spaces. OK, so now there is some very interesting uh, connection uh, between the existence of Yefimov spaces and the, the problem of existence of infinite dimensional metrizable quotients of CP, of spaces CP. So up to now, probably I didn't mention already, the up to now is it unknown, even for real case, if the space CPX, when X is compact, we deal with a real or complex case, or in non archimedean case, still is unknown if for any compact X, in our case, ultra regular compact X, CPX has infinite dimensional metrizable quotient. This is an unknown. But but it turns out that this question, which seems to be open, is strictly connected with some pure topological question, 30 years old open, and post 30 years, uh, uh, 30 years uh, earlier by Yefimov. And he asked about the following. Is it possible to get a compact space X, which doesn't contain non-trivial converging sequences, neither copies of beta M, copies of beta M. So I don't, I don't have enough time just to explain some, uh, some uh, mystery of the, of, the, of the question, but uh, what I already mentioned, this is a really very long standing open question and, uh, and still is unknown if such examples of Yefimov spaces exist in ZFC. So up to now, there are many very good names, many very good mathematicians who worked, and up to now this subject is still, uh, still uh, uh, active, uh, about examples of Yefimov spaces uh, in Z, uh, ZF. ZFC still we don't know, but under some set theoretical assumptions, quite strong, quite strong diamond principle. This is a, 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 a combinatorial principle, uh, uh, which implies uh, a continuum hypothesis. Uh, it was in, introduced in 1972 by Jensen. And uh, uh, several people work on this, uh, on the problem of the existence of Yefimov spaces. The, 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 the work, I, I just names I mentioned here, they, they work uh, in this pure topological aspect of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, mm, or, of checking or studying Yefimov spaces. Uh, but it turns out that one can look at and the problem of existence also from function analytical point of view. It turns out, this is our theorem with Jesław Śliwa, that if there exists alpha regular compact space such that this space doesn't have infinite dimensional neutralizable quotient, then necessary, this X must be Yefimov. Must be Yefimov. So you can see that both problems seems to be quite involved. So uh, it, it, it's rather very, very, uh, very 
uh, uh, maybe not so optimistic to get uh, just, just by hand uh, uh, such example of a space CPX without uh, uh, infinite dimensional mitraizable quotient because the problem of the existence of Yefimov space is really very difficult. So, so uh, still we don't know even how to attack, how to, how to construct uh, uh, such concrete X without infinite dimensional uh, mitraizable quotient. But of course, another question appears if we have already this result, if the converse holds. So uh, at the first, we first try to get the converse, but it, it took uh, uh, quite long time to get a counterexample. So we had to go back to original papers of Fedor to Yefimov uh, and De La Vega and to get some, uh, some uh, very special theorem showing that the compass doesn't work. It turns out we have the following example. So this example provides an ultra regular Yefimov space, but under this strange, strange, this is very, uh, very, very strong uh, 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 assumption, this diamond. So for which the converse of Colorado fails. This example is due some result of De La Vega. We found finally uh, uh, this example. So I'm going to, to provide very, very, uh, very sketch of the, of, the, of the proof, maybe not the proof, some skeleton of, of, of idea. So the rigorous ultra regular Yefimov space at Z that does, uh, has infinite dimensional mitraizable quotient. Mitraizable quotient. So this means the converse for the last colliery fails. So uh, he constructed, I mean De La Vega constructed under diamond ultra regular compact separable space, which is hereditary separable. Hereditary separable. So. That means that this space X doesn't contain beta M because beta N of course is separable but contains a non-separable subspace beta N minus M. So therefore this space X doesn't contain beta N. And what else does not contain non-trivial converging, converging sequences. So therefore both conditions imply that our object is Yefimov. And this was really the most important, but something else. We need to get that this space has infinite dimensional mitraizable quotient. This is the issue of our work. Uh, so uh, it turns out that this result, I mean, this example of De La Vega, uh, X, this X has a base of clopen pairwise homeomorphic sets. So if we have it, then we construct a sequence KM of infinite compact subsets of X, such a special tree, such that each KM contains two disjoint subsets homeomorphic with the next step. So if we have a such strange sequence of subsets of our space X, we have some theorem telling us that for this special case, our space CPX K has infinite, infinite dimensional mitraizable quotient. It's not clear how this quotient looks like. But in fact, this is quotient we just look for as mitraizable. So we were able to show that, that uh, uh, the, uh, our colorare does not characterize the theme of spaces. So we can have infinite dimensional mitraizable quotient and X is Yefimov space. Huh? X is Yefimov space. So I'm going to finish 
my talk with three questions, or maybe three or two questions. So suppose a Q is a prime number. Uh, we know already that this space has a this space has a quotient isomorphic to L C and C Q. So it is natural to ask: Can we get something more? Can we involve also this space of bounded uh, sequences? This is a I'm clear how to do it. And uh, another question uh, is uh, when, uh, so we, 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 prove, uh, uh, we prove this conjecture, we prove this claim here when K is locally compact. So what is the situation if K is not locally compact, is not locally compact? Can we have also uh, this uh, L infinity, which appears here as a as a quotient of this original CP beta d k. Huh? So uh, uh, more or less, this is everything what I wanted to 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 tell you. Uh, of course, my time is limited. Uh, this story with Yefimov spaces is much more involved. Um, and uh, there are some examples in the real uh, analysis, I mean, due to Talag uh, related with, um, with um, uh, some result of Odell, uh, uh, Rosenthal, and, and uh, some other people. Uh, this could be also tasted in the non archimedean case, but it's just completely different story maybe for the next next talk. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Jersey, for the nice talk. Uh, any questions? No questions, any comments? Okay, so uh, it looks like there are no questions. We thank Jersey again. Thank you. Do we have